Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to the second tutorial of the series Special Effects for Games in Unity. By the way, everything is available in my Patreon in case you are interested to have access to these effects. I'm using Unity 5.5 and today we are going to see how to create this healing effect. So let's get started. Ok, so the effects we create are done with several particle systems, so it's a good practice to create an empty game object, which is going to be called Particle System Healing. Just move a small value in the Y axis like this to make sure it isn't overlapping with the ground. Next thing to do is add our first particle system with a right click and rename it to Base. The first changes we are going to do are on the maximum particles, we only need 3. The next thing is the duration, which can be 3, and since it's going to be looped, it means that each loop has 3 seconds. We also want to say that each particle has a start lifetime of 3 seconds. And since we don't want these particles to move, we set the start speed to 0. Now in the emission, we want to say that the rate over time is 1, which basically means every second only one particle is emitted and in this case there is no necessity for the shape parameter to be on because we want this to be in the center and almost steady. Next thing we wanna do is create a new folder called something like healing and inside it we want to create a material called base and in this shader drop down menu select particle and choose additive. Now we need an image and I originally made mine in Photoshop, but for the sake of this tutorial we can download one on Google. If we search for something like Aura PNG or other keywords, what matters is that it's a PNG and that we get one image like this one. I'm gonna try something with this and I'm gonna import it to Unity. Drop on top of this slot and drag the material on top of our base particle system, like this. And you can see that this immediately takes effect, and you may notice that the orientation is vertical. And we can change this in the last parameter called renderer, and in the emitter mode we can select horizontal billboard. Ok, that's great, but if we zoom in, as you may have noticed, the texture will shrink. And this happens because the max particle size has to be at least 3. And once we have done this, we want to turn on rotation over lifetime, which will make our particle system rotate. And you can make this spin faster or slower by increasing or decreasing the degrees. Now we are going to make this smooth and more appealing by turning on color over lifetime which will make the start and the end of the particle transparent. And we can control that with these keys. We can add one in the top with the left click mouse. I have this one already saved, but what you really want to know is that the keys on top control the opacity, in other words the alpha, and the bottom keys controls the color. And as you can see they have a transparent beginning and a transparent ending. Now let's make sure that each particle starts smaller with the parameter size over lifetime, press the square and choose this linear graph. Select the left handle and drag it like this. This way the particles are born smaller and grow until they reach the start size parameter. That we are going to change it right now to 10. So if you want to change the color, you can do it in the start color. I'm gonna choose something green. And I'm just gonna quickly create a hole in Photoshop. And I can do this by basically selecting the elliptical market tool. And more or less in the set and create a proportional circle by holding Alt and Shift. And with the right click mouse select feather. Enter a value of something like 100 and delete. Now press Ctrl S to save and go back to Unity. Now that we have this hole on our particle system we need another particle system which is going to create an image in the center of our hole. And for the sake of this tutorial I'm gonna quickly create a new file with 2000 by 2000 in Photoshop, create a new layer with Ctrl Shift N, unlock the background with a double click, 
paint it all black. Now select this custom shape tool and here you can choose this shape. And with Alt and Shift I proportionally create this and set the color to white. Double click on the layer to access the layer style, turn on outer glow, choose white and increase the size and spread to something like this. Now you can hide the black background and save it as a PNG to Unity. Back to our healing particle system, let's duplicate the base system and rename it to something like healing icon. And we need a new material, so let's create a new one, rename it and set the shader to particle and select additive. Drop on top of the healing icon and first thing we want to do is change the start size, so it can fit in the hole that we created and maybe 7 will do the work. And that's pretty much it for this one, let's create another particle system and call it particles. Rotate it in the X axis, minus 90 degrees and for now let's change the amount of particles to around 50. Now we want to make these particles a lot more random and we can do it by setting the start size to be random between constants, like this. And we can do the same thing for the start speed which will make some particles slower and others faster. Let's change the shape and make the particles spawn in the radius of the base like this. You can scale it up with these handles until it fits the base circle. After you have found the right shape for you, we can change the color to match the other particle systems and we can copy the color like this and paste it to the small particles. Now let's turn on the color over lifetime so they don't disappear and appear out of nowhere. I will select one of these presets that I already had created and we also want to turn on the size over lifetime and select the last graph which will ease in and ease out the particle size. Now to create more randomness we want to turn on velocity over lifetime and select random between two constants, which will allow us to put a minimum and a maximum value in the x, y and z axis. And we set this to something like minus 1 for the minimum and 1 for the maximum, and the three axes have the same values. More diversity is also achievable by setting the start lifetime to random between two constants, which will make some particles live longer than others. Finally, just set the max particles in the renderer to something like 3. You can see all the particle systems at the same time by selecting them all like this. Now, to improve the particles, we can search in Google for Point of Light PNG, download something like this, import it to Unity, and this time we can duplicate an existing material, rename it, add the new image to this material and drag the material on top of the particles. And we get these particles looking much better. Now, I give a few more adjustments and move on to the next particle system, which I like to call the vertical cuts. And we can duplicate the particles, by the way. And let's make a few changes like we don't want this randomness coming from the velocity over lifetime. So let's turn it off and the shape of the cone has to be vertical like a cylinder, like this. And down here in the render we want to change the emitter mode to stretch a billboard. Ok, but we still need to go to Google in case you don't want to use an image editing software and download a PAG image similar to this one. Now we import it to Unity duplicate one of these materials and drag the image on top of it. I'm gonna use an image that I created and now I drag and drop the material on top of the vertical cuts. Now we want to increase the minimum and the maximum of their start size. And we also want to make them faster in the beginning and slower at the end. I also decreased the amount of particles to around 100 
Now make the cone bigger until it covers the base circle. And after that we are only missing a very important detail, that is only available from Unity 5.5, and it's the light parameter. If you select the healing icon particle system, and scroll down here, you can see that there is an option for light, which has an input for light, and we can create a point light, call it particle light, I'm gonna change the color to blue, just to show you one thing, you don't need to do this, and now we can drag to the folder to create a prefab, and erase the one in our scene. And let's actually select the base particle system and turn on light and now drag and drop the prefab light we have created. Let's increase the rate to 1. And we almost don't see anything because we need to increase the intensity and the range multiplier. And now we start to see the blue light I created. And I set this light to blue because now we can say if the light has the same color as the particle system or if it has its own color. Now just make a few more adjustments to the range and intensity and we are almost pretty much done with our healing particle system. And just in case you are interested to make this trigger sound, it's fairly easy, I just created a sphere collider, adjusted the radius, added the audio source, created a script that receives an audio clip, and with the function on trigger enter, say that if the collider tag is the player, then we get the audio source and play one shot the sound we are going to assign in the inspector. Now turn on is trigger for the sphere collider and assign the tag player to the FPS controller. And that's it, it's done. And we have a healing sound coming from the healing particle system, which I think is really great and easy to do. And that's basically it guys, I hope you have learned something new, and if you are interested, you can have access to these effects and much more in my Patreon, and I will give you a link where you can download your reward. Thanks a lot for watching guys, subscribe for weekly game development videos, and see you in the next tutorial.